I'm Jennifer Hambrick, midday host of Classical 101, and I'm here in the Classical 101 studio with violinist Gil Shaham, who is in Columbus uh, this week to perform with the Pro Musica Chamber Orchestra. Thank you so much for taking the time to sort of squeeze this conversation in. So happy to be with you. So happy to be here. Well, I'm happy to have you here. The last year has been challenging, I think, pretty much for everyone in the world because of the pandemic. The pandemic has uh, created unique challenges, I guess I'll say, for performers, classical musicians included, with concert cancellations and travel restrictions. You are, of course, an international uh, world-class violinist. You, your job is to go around the world and perform concerts, to travel the world and perform concerts. So what have you been doing, you know, this year? What what has this past year been like for you? No, that's Yeah, that's absolutely right. You know, for, for me, for people like me, our work is... Uh, 90, 99% on the road. And so it all, the, all of that kind of work um, came to a standstill. And, uh, you know, I think it's kind of ironically during these tragic times, and, and they were much more tragic for others than, than for, for myself and my, my family. But I think somehow ironically, um, y you know, there, there was something positive about being able to slow down and um, reflect. You know, I think a lot of us got to do a lot of soul searching and uh, reflecting on our lives and our choices and who we want to be and who we want to help and what impact we want to have. And, you know, personally, I loved hanging around my family for for this whole um, this whole year. They're sick of me. You know, they're completely <laughs> sick of me at this point. When are you going on tour again? You know, <laughs> don't you need to play someplace? <laughs> um, no, but I've, I've loved being with them. And you know, what's, what was interesting, I know different people deal very differently, but in, in our house, so my, my wife is a violinist as well, mm -hmm. Adele Anthony, and we have three kids who all play instruments. And somehow this year, really had a lot more music around the house than ever before, you know, and all three of the kids and both Adele and myself found ourselves, you know, in, in our room, in our studio, practicing and, you know, learning music. And um, so somehow there, there was something, um, I don't know, affirming about that. How, mm. how was that for you here? Did you find that there were changes in listenership? over this year compared to other years? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, definitely we, uh, you know, particularly early early on in our lockdown last spring, uh, last March, last April, uh, last May, um, our c uh, classical music station listenership went, you know, way up. I mean, I think people were really seeking out solace, you know, the kind of solace that, um, that classical music can offer you. Um, and of course, uh, the the news was 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 dire. The news about the pandemic, and and there was a political news or social news that 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 was very very, it was just all kind of coming down on everybody. And so yes, I think our our listeners really really dove into classical one hundred and one, our station as, as kind of an escape and as kind of a, a reassurance that there was still that the world still had something really nice and and lovely and just beautiful that they could sort of wrap themselves in this great music. So I think that's exactly, yeah. I think, you look, music is life affirming, you know, and then music is love, you know? And uh, yeah, that, that's how we felt in our house. And, and we all went, w went, um, y you know, head first into <laughs> learning new pieces. I learned mm -hmm. a, a bunch of new pieces for mm -hmm. me. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and also there were a bunch of sort of creative things that happened. I was very lucky that uh, some composers felt uh, like they wanted to write violin pieces. Scott Wheeler wrote a short little piece for solo violin called Isolation Rag, which he sent to me. <laughs> and uh, Jason Anik, a wonderful, um, I guess I guess he calls himself a jazz violinist. He, he wrote um, a little etude. I think he calls it a jetude <laughs> for, <laughs> for solo violin. Yeah. And then, the, you know, somehow musicians all learned how to use their, uh, you know, their their recording devices and their phones and their videos. And yep. they started making home studio recordings and we started, uh, you know, overdubbing things. So, th so there was 
yeah there was this kind of a great creativity and this just this wanting to um share with others and to be with others mm -hmm. and then i i just now when you started um saying s just just when you were saying that about music providing solace i i was thinking of the this fall i uh, i flew over to france to paris which mm -hmm. was open at the time mm -hmm. and they played a concert there the orchestra played a concert in front of i think it was 50% audience but but anyway mm -hmm. it, it was for many it was the very first concert in a long time that we played and in the audience for for listeners to to attend and uh, I just remember walking in even the first rehearsal and then the first performance everybody was very moved you could see so many tears in in people's eyes and and it's not that um it's not that we took it for granted before, but maybe maybe now, I mean, we certainly will never take it for granted again, mm -hmm. and maybe now we, we, we appreciate how precious it is, really, mm -hmm. this kind of things that human, humans do, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> these, you know, sharing music with each other. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really has been an incredibly intense experience, hasn't it? I mean, just being almost totally isolated from every other <laughs> human being, you know, um, for fear of one's life. Uh, and yes, um, nothing can really take the place of that that human contact. But music, music can sort of be a a reminder that you know we we can sort of all we all enjoy certain things, and we can sort of we we really are kind of uh, in this together as as the saying has <laughs> gone yeah. um, throughout the last year or so. Mm -hmm. You uh, were talking just a moment or so ago about uh, your concert in Paris uh, last fall. Um, and, you know, again, um, as I said earlier, concerts are starting slowly but surely to, to sort of appear on, con on, uh, on calendars. When I say concerts, I mean in-person concerts. There have been a lot of virtual performances over the, over the past year. Um, you are here in Columbus, you know, so you, you, you're, you're, you know, you've got these performances here this week. You know, do you have, are you looking forward to a, a pretty robust concert series, a concert season coming up? Or are things still kind of tentatively finding their way into your date book, so to speak? Well, I should say these concerts this week with um, uh, Maestro Dansmeyer and mm -hmm. uh, Pro Musica um, are the first concerts that I'm doing that are not... Um, live streamed or broadcast on the internet they're not virtual concerts they're what's the opposite of virtual in they're, person they're in yeah. person they yeah. are real mm -hmm. right, <laughs> you know, right, right. it's yeah. not virtual then what it's uh i don't know yeah um and um yeah so that's very exciting and i and i love this group and these musicians they're amazing um yeah the fall is looking relatively normal mm -hmm. But still, maybe not quite as much as it, as previous years. Mm -hmm. And then beginning January next year, looks like it'll be quite busy, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I, I'm personally happy about that. But I think what's happened has is that many dates that um, were postponed all have been coming into you know been postponed to that period, and so it, it's actually. So the first half of the year will be less busy than usual, and second half is, is going to be very, very busy. Mm, okay, okay. Well, uh, you mentioned a, a little while ago, you know, all of the virtual performing uh, that various musicians, musicians all over the world, I guess, have done. Uh, and, you know, as challenging as this past year has been for performers, for everyone but in, in particular, I guess, uh, for this conversation, for performers because of the pandemic, I have actually seen really an explosion of creativity, um, as I think you were alluding to a little while ago, among performers who have had to keep performing uh, and have uh, not been able to do so in person in concert halls before in person audiences, and so have turned to the internet. You know, basically have, have uh, produced virtual performances of one stripe or another. What What are some of the kind of I, I don't know greatest uh, changes or novelties, if I could call them that, that you have seen in this regard? And, and, and what are some of the, the, the innovations, I guess, that you would like to see maybe um, carried forward even beyond the pandemic, but that stem from, you know, this pandemic period? Well, I mean, what an amazing time to be 
uh, an artist, you know, I guess of, of anything, music, but for musicians in particular, you know, I, I remember when I started in the 80s, and even uh, for radio broadcasts, you know, you would have refrigerator sized machines, you know, to get the, the highest quality recording. You'd have these, these giant Dolby machines. And for editing, you would have to use, you know, razor blades and the, and the, um, um, right, the, the, the magnetic tape. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, yep. Um, and now you, you can really get the highest quality recording almost on your phone, you mm -hmm. know, but certainly with a laptop. And so that really has opened up a lot of possibilities for, for musicians. You know, um, I guess very early on, um, some good friends, the Jacobsons, Eric Jacobson and Colin mm -hmm. Jacobson of uh, the Knights in mm -hmm. New York and also of uh, Brooklyn writer, very creative people called us up and they said, look, we're in Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are across the river, and uh, maybe we can make music together. And so I guess the first thing we did was a Bach double, actually, just a movement where Adele and I played two violin parts, and then we sent it over to um, Colin and Eric, and then uh, Colin, who is normally a violinist and a composer, put on his violist's hat, and he played the viola, and Eric played the cello and somehow I think we overdubbed five tracks and put it together you know so, somehow in, in that kind of performance and so that that is new for us I will say if there are any um, techies listening you know <laughs> if there are people who are brilliant engineers if there were some way to get past the lag I, if there's some algorithm that will allow us to zoom exactly in time. Mm -hmm, yeah, um, I think that would be a revolution for for musicians. Right. But for now, we're sort of working around around that. Right. Right. Uh, I, I know exactly the uh, the situation. You know, your musicians are in five different locations, zooming in, and to play together in impossible. that kind of synchronous, it does. It's it's impossible right now. Um, though I will say, other aspects of zoom of of this technology. Let me put it that way have even just over the last year improved, I think, dramatically because of this pandemic situation. Um, the, the sound quality that you're able to get, that you're able to, to get has, has improved. But, but again, you know, as you were saying, yeah, musicians can't, can't do a string quartet together. <laughs> not, for, not yet, for not yet. But I have yeah. a feeling maybe, yeah. maybe there's some way to. Oh yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. And, I'm, and I, I'm sure they'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it won't take another pandemic, but, but yeah. Okay, well, this has been uh, just a, a really uh, exciting conversation. Um, there's so much more uh, we could we could discuss, you know, about the current situation and the future situation. Um, but the future situation for you, I hope, will just kind of keep opening up, and as as the world kind of gets back to normal and 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 heals, and um, we can all come back together and experience and enjoy, and in your case, perform music. So, Gil Shaham, thank you again so much for your time today. Thank you. Thanks for having me.